Uh, another thing that's interesting about that verse there is it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. And we're talking about the, the lowly in spirit, the poor in spirit. So the, the gospel is being preached unto the meek, specifically being sent unto the meek. Why? Because the proud won't receive it. The proud in heart will not receive the gospel. Plain and simple. You have to humble yourself in order to receive the gospel. You have to. You cannot, no, no proud person is going to accept because why? Because they're trusting in themselves. They're too lifted up in themselves to ever bring themselves low enough to realize they need to rely on somebody else. You have to have a humble spirit in order to be saved. You have to. And unfortunately, some people need to be brought down against their own will. But thank God that that does happen. It's way better to be brought down to nothing in this earth and to have your soul be saved than it is to live this life full of riches and pride and die and go to hell forever. I had to turn to Psalm 37, Matthew 5, 5, where we read, continuing with the Beatitudes, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And this, of course, ties in perfectly with the poor in spirit, saying theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, they shall, um, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. When, uh, when Jesus comes back, he's saying the meek, they're going to inherit the earth. The meek is an attribute of people who get saved. Verse number 1, Psalm 37. Let's look at verse number 1. The Bible reads, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. So up to this point, we're going to read a little bit more, but up to this point we see he's starting off saying, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Don't be envious that these people are doing wickedly. Don't worry about them. Don't get upset with them. You don't have to get all angry with them. Their end is going to come, is what he's going to explain here. He says, you just need to delight yourself in the Lord, commit your way unto God, and do what's right. Don't worry about these other people who are doing wickedness and them not getting what's coming to them. Don't fret yourself over them. We don't have to worry about what all these wicked people are doing about their, about their end and what's going to happen to them. Because they will have their end. Verse number eight, uh, cease, cease from anger, forsake wrath, for not himself in any wise, for evildoers shall be cut off. It's God giving his promise. They will be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. What we see in this life is temporary with the wicked, you know, being lofty and having all these riches and having all this wealth and having all this stuff and the people who are just full of themselves and full of pride. That is what we see temporarily. But what God's teaching us is, it's just temporary. Don't worry. Because just because the world is upside down right now with the way things operate, God's going to fix it all. And you who are meek right now, you who are lowly right now, you who are suffering and enduring and going through these times, you're going to be the one with the mansion. You're going to be the one with everything. And not just temporarily, it's going to be forever. He's going to set things right. 
He's going to put everything the way it is. So all of your hard work, all of your efforts, all that you're doing to try to live for God and do what's right day after day, you're going to the grind of saying, no, I'm not going to make a bad choice. I'm going to try to do my best to live right and make it the hard way. It will pay off. But keep meek. Keep humble. And God will, he promises to flip things back the right way so that you don't have to be discouraged in this lifetime when you see things that are backwards happening. Why is it that that person should have everything so easy? Why is it that this person is so lifted up and exalted and so many people love this person? They're wicked. That's the way things are now, but it's not the way things will be. And God, God will write it and we don't need to worry about it. They're going to have their end. And when, when the, the, the time comes for judgment, all will be set right.